with those DCC lighting functions, this really does up the bar for any future models that come forward from any manufacturer. Well, hi there. How are you doing? Welcome back to the channel. It's really great to see you and I hope I find you well. You might notice that we're not actually up in Weir Yard at the moment. Instead, we've ventured downstairs to actually where Minnith Tatus is normally kept. And one of the other things that's down here is this very, very small O-gauge diorama. And on this O-gauge diorama, we've got today's Model 4 review. It's the award-winning Hellion AEC railcar. And I'm really grateful to Hellion for loaning me this sample to do a full review and put it through its paces. Now, you might remember that we also reviewed the double O gauge version, and that was quite an impressive model. But I'm really looking forward to putting this larger big brother through its paces here on my small O gauge layout. So in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts, Additional support is also provided by KR Models, daring to build the models that you want to see on your layout. So without further ado, let's take a closer look. For today's video, I'd like to extend a big thank you to Hellion for loaning one of their award-winning AEC rail cars in O-Gage. Now you might remember that we reviewed one of these in Double O a little while back on the channel, and it was really impressive. But the O-Gage version takes it another step further. And as you can see here, it does come in the standard Hellion box. It's really substantial, but we've had to move to another room because it quite frankly is too big for the rostrum camera that I've got set up in Weir Yard. So I'm just gonna pull this open and inside we've got the instruction leaflet. And this is fairly similar to the one that came with the double O version. And we've also got some information here, uh, the switches on the bottom, these are for the different lighting functions, exactly the same as we had on the double O version. And we did have a little bit of a problem with that because we just didn't have a decoder that would allow all the different lighting functions. And we are gonna do a full DCC fit later on. And what I will warn you is that um, if you use something like the 4 plus 2 uh, decoder from a Trainomatic, that will only give you access to six of the functions. And it needs to be a four power plus logic decoder to be able to get this to work. So what I'm actually gonna be doing is later on, I'm gonna be doing a DCC fit with a Daypole Imperium 3 decoder. And this is actually an eight function decoder. So we're gonna see if we can get all bar one of those lighting functions up and running. But it really is pushing the boundaries of what we can do in DCC. And in many respects, it's outpacing what a lot of the the decoder manufacturers are doing, but that should improve as the decoder manufacturers get to grips with these new multifunction models. Inside, we've got plenty of foam protecting the model, and the first thing that's pretty obvious is that it actually comes on a wooden plinth. Now, I'm just uh, working out how to get this out without damaging it, so I think if we just put this onto its side, and I'm just going to slide it out very carefully and uh, this table cover I've got is actually really protecting it well. So you can actually display it on this plinth if you want and it's just a nice touch. It also protects the model in transit. Looking to the underside uh, for removing the model, we've just got a couple of screws there and there. So what I'm gonna do is go to the trusty jeweler's screwdriver set. And what I want is the largest of the Phillips style screwdriver. We just unscrew both of these. Always best to have the model resting on uh, something. You don't want it to just drop and fall. Don't do this in your lap. And we can just take that away. 
And immediately one of the things I want to point out to you is we've got these dip switches on the bottom and these are for DC users. If you're going to be running this on DC, this allows you to turn on and off all of the light functions. Um, but I'm going to be fitting this with a DCC decoder, so I'm going to leave all those switched on. There's also a little hatch here with two screws holding it and that's where the decoder itself goes in. And if you've come here for the DCC fitting, I'm going to be showing you that in full later on in this video. The first thing that's very apparent with this is the weight. This is a substantial model and I can feel here that even though the 00 version was a very weighty model, this takes it one step further. Being an O-gauge, the detail is, well, there's so much more going on. And I must uh, point out that this is a review sample that's done the rounds. So uh, if you spot anything that looks a bit loose, uh, we're going to be putting that down to the fact that this has already done the rounds uh, through all of the magazines and has had quite a lot of rough handling. But you can see, actually, it's held up pretty well. The glazing here is flush into the sides and it's something that as you go up to the larger scales then this is even more noticeable that we haven't got any of that prismatic effect around the edge. These really do look more like a scale thickness piece of glazing. They also give us a good view through the interior and uh, looking inside uh, we've got a full complement of tables in there and this would be a perfect project for if you wanted to add passengers into the interior. The front end captures the really quite bulbous shape of the AEC railcar well. It's something that we pointed out in the 00 review that actually this is quite a complex shape Born out of the fact that the real diesel unit was fabricated from a number of probably flat sheets of metal that were crafted together. So in model form, this does make it quite a complex thing to tackle. But uh, Hellion have tackled that really, really well. So both ends of this model really do look the part. When you hold it like this, it does feel very substantial, but in the handling, there's no detail coming off. So what you do see on this is pretty well assembled. The vents on the roof are really quite sublime. And of course, with a model such as this, it's probably the most viewed side of one of these models. So it's important that the roof detailing does look the part. And on this, the riveting is quite subtle. We've got two different sizes of riveting, including this uh, quite intense rib across the roof where the different panels were put together. But then we've got a somewhat more subtle riveting effect in between where other constructional parts of this would have been riveted in. The vents are really quite nice. They do appear to be a separately applied detail and they are so well done for it with the rings of rivets and the lip around each of them. The roof is not symmetrical and it uh, accurately portrays the vents at this end. Again, captured really well and do match up with the photographs of the prototype. They are all separately applied detail and one of the things I like about this is you can actually see right underneath this black vent and it looks like something that serves a function rather than just added on because it needs to look the part. Buffer beam detail is all added from the factory as standard. We do have sprung buffers. One of the things I will warn you is that the buffers can be pulled out, so just be a bit careful with that. But if you do manage to pull them out, then it is quite simple to push them back in. Uh, there's just a retaining spring piece behind. Looking back to the underside, we've got some pretty substantial bogies underneath. It's only driven from one end, as I can feel here. This end is the driven end, and there's not really any great play in this model. And the other end is just idling wheels. Uh, there's no drive to the second bogey. 
But being a rail car, being that it is actually quite heavy as well, it doesn't really need the extra traction of the second bogey being powered. And it does feature all wheel pickup. Turning to the livery on this model, I really do like this BR green. Unlike locomotives of the day, the rail cars got the coaching roundels rather than things like the ferret and dartboard or cycling lion, and it does make them stand out somewhat. And I suppose it is very fitting, it being a passenger carrying vehicle, that it got the passenger coaching roundel. The coach roundel is really nicely done. Being that this is O gauge and obviously somewhat bigger, it's even more critical that these be reproduced sharp and legible. And we're not disappointed on this model. It's the standout feature on the body side and it has been replicated very, very well. We also have the yellow stripe along the full length of the vehicle body, and that is straight, it's true. There's absolutely no smudging around the edges either. And it's always something that I do look for is that kind of slight fuzziness, not just where it turns corners, but where it crosses detail. And we're not seeing any of that on here. So it has been incredibly well done. We've got separately fitted door handles and safety rails as well and these feel like they are proper metal and feel like and look like they've been done in a very appropriate brassy coloured metal. Looking also lower down the body side all of the panel gaps are faithfully reproduced and even where the detail goes across them there's no distortion of that printing it really is nicely done. Further down on the body valances, we've got this really, really nice great effect so that we've got kind of a recess behind that allows the etched mesh to sit with an air gap behind and really gives a great 3D effect. Even though the model itself, when we turn it over, doesn't actually go into the base here very far. But as you're never gonna be looking at this model upside down, it really doesn't matter. And the upsum of this is that we get really great access, not just for these switches, but also for DCC fitting too. Looking back to the bogies, the construction of these is really nicely realised. The more you look, the more detail there is. And this suspension compensation with the axle boxes really does look like it could actually move as this vehicle goes along the track. It doesn't, but it is incredibly well realised with a host of separately fitted detail parts. We also have the drive to the axle, which doesn't actually go anywhere. If I move the bogey to its extreme of travel, you can see that there's no connection to under here where on the real rail car, there would have been the engine and transmission, but it doesn't matter. Again, you're not gonna see this from normal viewing distances. The other bogey is a reverse of the one that we saw at the front. On the non-transmission side, we've got planar axle box covers, but we do see the exquisite rivet detail and spring detail on these very slab-sided fabricated bogies, and it really does look the business. The BR Green is really nicely realised on the model, and I'm not sure whether it's plastic or metal, but the look of this really is like a metal object, and that might sound a bit facile, but really that's what it's trying to look like, and Hellion have done that ever so well. The rest of the windows, we've got the bars behind in the guards compartment. We've got these separately fitted and uh, independently coloured windscreen wipers. These really do look the business, certainly good enough to actually move, although they don't in practice, but looking good enough is certainly fine by my book. These spacious windows in the cab end really do give rise to a good view of that cab interior. And I would recommend that if you're going to add passengers into this model, then do consider a crew as well, because you really can see them through these windows. We also get these speed whiskers, which were very, very much a feature of these early rail cars before yellow warning panels put paid to all that Art Deco style. 
Looking back to the bottom, one of the things I'm going to talk you through is these switches. They are numbered 1 to 9, and as I said in the intro, we've got nine different lighting functions on these. The model is natively set up to accept the version 5 ESU lock pilot or ESU lock sound, and if you use another decoder, then you may have to play around with some of the CV settings to remap some of the functions. Switch number one is for the lower lights of end one. Switch two is the lower lights of end two. We've then got switch three for the top light, end one. Switch four for the top light of end two. Switch five for the red light at end one. 6 for the light at N2, 7 and 8 are the cab lights at uh, each of the ends, and 9 brings up the last of these switches, and that is to control the interior lights. One of the criticisms that I would level against this is that it might have been nice to see some of the more frequently used lighting functions be lower down those function lists, so that those of you who maybe don't have access to a 10 function decoder would still be able to enjoy some of the features, such as the interior lights, and the fact that that's up there on function 9 does make it a little bit inaccessible for anybody other than those using the ESU lock pilot and lock sound version 5. That said, it really is refreshing to see a manufacturer pushing out the boat with DCC functionality. The model doesn't natively include a speaker when it comes from the factory, but there is ample space inside for a quite large one, and the instructions do give details on where that goes. I'm going to turn now to the DCC fitting. For this, it's simply a case of rolling the locomotive over and gaining access to this panel underneath, secured by two screws. What I'm going to do is get the smaller of my jeweler's screwdrivers and just very, very carefully unscrew first one end and then the other. This panel then lifts clear and inside here we just have to dig through some of the wires and you can see the blanking plate just hidden away in here. Be careful not to snag any of these wires. It's a little bit difficult to access. Again, it's something that uh, I would have suggested that uh, having the wiring on the other side might have been a little bit more helpful, but this is the way that Hellion have uh, chosen to lay out the board. The blanking plate itself can be released just by careful wiggling and apply a gentle upwards pressure as you do that and the blanking plate will pop off. We then go to the decoder that we've chosen and we already know that this is not going to allow us to access that ninth function, which is a shame, but we'll see what we can get out of it. Again, I'd like to thank Daypol for very generously supplying this decoder for the review. Lining up the pin one, which for those of you who are wondering, is at this side, just by this plug. It is a little bit tricky, and it's a shame in a way that given that we have this easy access board in the bottom of the locomotive, that we're still struggling to fit the decoder into place. Finally got it into position, and we're just wiggling it down. Now don't apply too much force, I can feel that this circuit board is bouncing a little bit and I'm not sure how well supported it is from underneath. But we've got that decoder in, we then need to very carefully put all these wires back so we don't trap them in the hatch and then it's simply a case of putting the uh, access hatch in over the top. And there you have it, that is our DCC fit. 10 out of 10 for the easily accessed compartment, but unfortunately it's going to lose some points at just how tricky it is to fit a decoder in amongst all those wires. Such a shame that the wires couldn't have been routed to one side just to make that task a whole lot easier. Once on the layout, the running characteristics are actually quite smooth. Even at a really low speed, it does just crawl along. As we speed it up a little bit, we can get some quite realistic speeds from it, and it does just glide along the track. We don't have a huge amount of track available here, but what we've got, it is running really nice and well on. 
putting the model onto the DCC Concepts O-Gauge rolling road, let's just see how well it runs up to some more prototypical top speeds. speed curve out of the box does seem pretty good and given that this is another manufacturer's decoder and certainly one which is not specified as being the ideal choice I'm actually really pleased with the out of the box performance and this more than makes up for the slightly challenging DCC fit. The other thing to note on the DCC Concepts rolling road is that there's no wobble. This locomotive is very well balanced. The wheels are straight and true, and there's no issues whatsoever with this trundling around, even the largest of model layouts. I was really pleased with the performance. So we turn now to the scores. First up is build quality. And for this, I was actually really, really pleased with how well this model fitted together. It is a review sample that has been around the block, so I'm gonna cut it some slack for the two little foibles that it came with one of which was that the three link coupling at one end, which is fully functional, had come loose. And one of the buffers too was loose, but was very, very easy to refit. So all in all, I was quite pleased with what we got and all of the handrails, the windows, everything else was secure and stood up to the handling with the greatest of ease. So I'm gonna give it a 9.4. When it came to running quality, this out of the box with no running in whatsoever worked really, really well. I didn't change any of the CV numbers on the decoder. And being that it is a rival manufacturer's decoder, it is quite impressive that out of the box, everything just worked without any need to adjust anything, not even the back EMF. The rail car also went up to a pretty reasonable top speed, but was able to crawl along with just a slight amount of notching at notch one out of 128. So I'm gonna give that a 9.9. .9. When it came to DCC fitting and innovation, there were a number of great points on this model. I really like the way that Hellion have embraced what DCC can do. And with nine different lighting functions, this is finally at last doing what really DCC should have been doing right from the outset. It is a little bit tricky to source a decoder that will access all nine functions, and the best that I could do in this review was an eight function decoder, but I was impressed with what I saw. I didn't need to remap any of the functions, they just worked out of the box. My only qualm was that maybe Hellion could have put some of the more usual functions that would get a lot of use, such as the interior cabin lights, on a lower function number meaning that those with access to a decoder that may not have the full nine functions could nonetheless make the most out of the lighting functions that they were most likely to use. In real life, the red tail lights were barely used on these models, and really those should have been functions eight and nine, and this would have freed up some of the auxiliary functions for those who don't have access to the full nine function decoders to be able to enjoy nonetheless. The easily removed panel on the underside of this model really is the direction that DCC should be going. But unfortunately, once you get inside, there is a little bit of a rat's nest of wiring, and this obscures the decoder socket itself, making it just a little bit more tricky than it needed to be to get the decoder in place. There still isn't a risk of damaging any of the detailing on the model, but nonetheless, I just felt that it was two steps forward and one step back in terms of making this easy for the end consumer. All in all though, it is a good package, and there's a lot of careful thought gone into this model, and I'm gonna give it a 9.0. When it comes to accuracy and quality of finish, there really wasn't anything to fault on this unit. All of the complicated shapes that were so reminiscent of the AEC railcar have been captured perfectly. It's a really complex shape, and Hellion have realized it without anything that I can see that is a retrograde step. So all in all, to cut to the chase, it's 10 out of 10. There's nothing to fault, so why would we take anything off?
When it comes to value for money, I've had a look around and the prices that I can find this for are around the £425 mark for the DCC Ready version. This does seem a little bit on the expensive side when you consider that a number of other locomotives in O-Gage have been made available for less than half that. But this is an award-winning model. With those DCC lighting functions, this really does up the bar for any future models that come forward from any manufacturer. So, all in all, weighing up the plus and minuses, I'm going to give this an 8.1. That gives us a total score of 46.4, which is really, really respectable. I'd like to thank Hellion for very, very generously loaning me this model to do the review on, and I'm really pleased to be able to put it through its paces. Whilst I don't currently have an O-gauge layout that would really do this justice, I was nonetheless able to make use of it on my small O-gauge diorama model, and it really did look good on there. So much so that I'm more than happy to consider more locomotives from Hellion in the future. And my eyes turn to some of their other releases and O-Gage, and I start to think that maybe I should have some of them in my collection. Well, I hope you really enjoyed today's video at this rather unusual change of venue. Don't forget that we've got that affiliate link down below to take you to Rails of Sheffield if you really want to check out the model that we reviewed today or the other livery options available. I'd also love to hear from you in the comments section down below. What did you think of today's model? Is there something that you've seen that maybe I missed? Or do you own one of these and you really think that it is great? Or do you have another experience that you want to share with fellow modelers? I'd also love to hear from you with suggestions of other models that you'd really, really love to see me review in a future video. But until next time, this is me, Jenny Kirk, saying don't forget to tickle that like button, share this video, subscribe to the channel as well if you haven't already done so, and you can also head on over to Patreon and help support the channel to keep making the videos that you want to see. Until next time, this is me, me, Jenny Kirk, saying you take great care of yourself and I look forward to seeing you then. Take care, happy modelling and bye for now. Today's video is sponsored by Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders designed to be fully compatible with every manufacturer's locomotive. Visit train-o-matic.com to browse the full range and see what they've got suitable for you. Additional support is also provided by KR Models, daring to build the models that you want to see on your layout. Check out their website today and see some of their award-winning models, as well as their forthcoming masterpieces in miniature. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon, and an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Offshore Allen, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Gary Lewis, David Quinn, Sparky 107107, George Botterini, Chris Moss, Robert Steers, MD of San Juan Model Company and Grantline Products, Sam Yates, Dale Williams, John N. from NC, NYM Arish, Jonathan Foster, Peter, Clifford Ison, Larry W. Grant, NI Railways 4000 Class, Ian Coulson, Alan Dickerson, Eddie Papair, Karen Nicol, Medwin Williams, Crossways Point Junction, 3B Rail, and Jennifer Garrett. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.